Hey everybody, I'm at the Denver Card Show and here's a quick look at my setup. I just got set up. Um, I'm freezing like crazy right now, but here's my setup. Yeah, they open up this big bay door and let zero degree weather come in for quite a while. Uh, long story short, I left the show and I had a pretty gnarly cold. Might have even been the flu, I don't know. Let me know what you think of my setup and we're going to move right along to the next part of the video where I show you one of my pickups. Pretty cool pickup. Uh, I have kind of a small setup. I mostly try to bring in like the better um, mega boxes, some hobby boxes. There's a little game I like to play. It's like roulette. Let's move on. All right. Hopefully you guys liked that quick look at my setup at the last Denver show. And now let's look at one of my pickups. I, um, I picked up a handful of things, a few little collections. I picked up um, a whole bunch of really good $5 cards. Uh, but um, this is kind of... This is kind of a pickup uh, where it's going to be a lot better inventory for the next show. People love graded cards. They love vintage. Uh, so I picked this lot up right here. I'll tell you how much I paid for it at the end of the video. Alrighty, uh, so starting things off, it's mostly baseball. A little bit of football here, though, so we'll get right into this right here. Uh, nice 1957 uh, PSA 8 Sam Baker. That's a pretty cool card right there. What am I doing with all these cards? They're probably going to be mostly... Uh, it's mostly show inventory, but I also do the, uh, the hot packs, so... Um, some of these are going hot packs and stuff like that. Uh, if you don't know what those are, just type in Frank Specie Hot Pack and uh, check out that video. I sell them on eBay. Uh, anyways, these are mostly, I would say, mid-grade cards. Uh, there's a good handful of sevens uh, throughout, sevens and, and a little higher. But anyways, moving right along. There's a nice 77 tops Joe Ferguson and a 7. Uh, 86 flare, 6.5. Now, well, one thing uh, that should be said about all these cards is they look fantastic. They look like this guy sent them in thinking he'd get nines on all of them. If you look at them, they're super sharp. So I'm not sure what Beckett saw. Uh, I, I'm guessing in some instances it could be centering because um, they're super tough on centering. Like this is a, this is a seven, um, and centering top to bottom is a little bit uh, a little bit off. Um, that's probably what dropped down to a seven because the card looks like a mint card. Uh, so these are here to be great cards for someone who's looking for a really clean set. Um, yeah, real nice. There's that Dave Parks, 71 tops. Look how clean that thing is. Such a nice card. Nice sharp corners. Alrighty. I'll go through these pretty quick because I want this to be about a 10 minute video. And I think that's going to be... So here's a 4. This must have a crease or some kind of an indention in it because the card's sharp. I mean, it's a solid near mint card. Uh, and there's got to be something on the back that somebody missed. Um, probably some kind of an indention. I just... I have no idea what... A card looks really, really clean to me. I have no idea why that's a four. No idea at all. All right, let's move these over here. Okay, let's get right into this. Uh, I have these all in order, but um, unfortunately, I couldn't fit them in the rows by year in here, so they kind of got a little mixed up. But here's a nice 79 tops of the Hall of Famer and another great slugger from back in the day in a seven. There's a Hall of Famer, Tony Perez, in a 7, 1980 tops. Bruce Souter, rest in peace, just passed away this year. Saw him at Hall of Fame weekend. He was not looking very good. Daryl Jackson, in a 6. Marty Patton. And here's another great uh, Kansas City Royal, Willie Wilson. Great player. Card looks mint. A little off-center left to right. Roger Metzger. I almost think about taking some of these ones where the centering's not that bad and uh, maybe cracking them, send them to PSA. Craig Swan and, and Louisiana Lightning, both a couple great pitchers from back in the day. There's a nice second year Paul Molitor, Hall of Famer. Yeah, we got a five, um, most likely because of the centering. The card as sharp as can be. <laughs> and Raleigh Fingers right there. And a 5.5. But again, these cards are as sharp, sharp as can be. All right, let's move right along here. Okay, I'll try to get some of these older ones here. I'm going to take these down without making too much of a mess here. Okay, let's see. Uh, a couple of Joe Cunningham 1959 tops in a 7. Now, some of you might be wondering, what's BVG? That's Beckett Vintage Grading. They started that uh, 20 years ago. Uh, and it's kind of where they, um, they take into consideration how the cards were made, um, cut, so on and so forth and they factor that in so sometimes the grades can be more generous than they would be if it was bgs or psa or sgc grading so uh with all that being said hopefully that helps you understand uh and a lot of these these cards don't sell for the same price as like a psa 7 they usually sell a couple grades lower 
um, just to give you an idea. So this Joe Cunningham would probably sell in the PSA 5 range. There's two of those right there. Real nice clean cards though. Hall Brown. Uh, but with all that being said, these could, I could send these to PSA and they could come back PSA 7s and 8s, you know. So, because uh, PSA is not as critical on the centering as Beckett is. They are critical. Not as critical though. Billy Goodman, an old Red Sox. Currently on the White Sox there though. 6.5. Bob Shaw. Hall of Famer early win in a five. And again, these card guys are just so sharp. Duke Maz on the Yankees. I wonder if he's in relation to Kevin Maz, the old uh, Yankee uh, super prospect that never really panned out, who also had a twin brother named Jason, which most people don't realize. Jim Landis in a six. Mike Fornielis, I think. Boston Red Sox in a six. Gene Connolly in a six. Okay. Milt Graff. Milt Graff again. Two sixes. Mickey Vernon in a 5.5. John C. Powers in a 5.5. Gary Bell in a 5.5. Gordon Jones in a six. Bob Shaw in a six. Russ Camara. I have no idea how to say his name. Sounds good. Another Milt Graff and a 6.5. And Lindy McDaniel. Like, this is just sad this card's so clean and sharp but that centering 90 10 centering top to bottom probably 70 30 left or right that's that's what hurt him on the uh that's what hurt him there gonna pause the video all right just paused it real quick just so i could uh you know cut some time out you know without without doing all the uh you know moving cards around and stuff all right here we go another duke maz and a 7.5 nice 61 top stick brown and a 7.5 Dick Draw and a and an eight, very nice for the Cubs. Seth Moorhead and an eight, and Mel Roach. So some of these ones you'd almost consider sending into PSA because PSA eight on a sixty-one tops is going to sell for a lot more. And if you can get it uh, at the at a reasonable price, these are nineteen sixties. You can get it like in the uh, fifteen dollar range. You know it can be worth uh, the upgrade. Kyle Mecklish five point five. Joe D. Maestri in a six. And again, these cards are are just great um, for a set collector because they're so sharp. Just a little off center mostly. Roy Seaver in a five. He was a great signer through the mail. And Russ Camara again in a four. Next stack. Okay. Willie Kirkland in a four. Batter Bafflers. Glenn Hobby, Don Cardell. A uh, Cardwell, sorry. Again, super nice clean card. Super off center, top to bottom. Got a three. Hall of Famer Dick Williams. Hall of Fame manager, that is. See, I think his rookie card is a 57 top, so that'd be a, like a fourth year card. Jim Balmer. Another Dick Williams and a six. Bob Shaw. Jim Brewer with the 61 rookie star. Pretty cool. Alrighty, Dave Hillman in a 5.5. Hank Bauer, no, still an outfielder there. I think he went on to be a manager here shortly after this. He was a Yankee great, great leader in, Doug, in the clubhouse. Ralph Lomenti in a 4.5. Steve Burrow in a 5. Julio Baquir, maybe? Baquir, I don't know. Ed Sadowski in a 6. Clint Courtney. Uh, ladies, guys, not. I mean, these guys, they just they just don't look like athletes, major league ball players, if I'm being honest. That's what I love about these vintage cards. Mike McCormick in a 6.5. Dave Nicholson in a 6.5. Looking very serious. He's like, this is my big shot, guys. I can't ruin it here. I got to get a hit. Got to stay on the team. Ken Aspermonti in a 5.5. Alrighty. Pause it. Alrighty, moving right along. I got a toppler, a big old possible toppler here. When I mean toppler, I mean these things could topple over. Okay, let's just kind of do this. There we go. Okay, now we get to some 71s. Eddie Leon in a seven. Les Kane. I love looking at 71s that are super clean. I love having that nice black border all the way around. These cards are notoriously ugly uh, from. Poor cardstock, poor handling, and just every flaw shows. Ed Spezio. I wonder if he's related to Scott Spezio, former Hall of, uh, former Major Leaguer. Roy Foster. Ron Peronowski. 
Rick Austin, George Mitterwald, Steve Hubley. Chico Cruz is next up. Phil Reagan. Tom McCraw. Love that picture. It's just a nice picture on that card. Jim Schellenbeck. Jim Beauchamp. Joe Negro. Brother of Hall of Famer Phil Negro, who passed away also this past year. Ken Suarez. Slide these over here now. Okay. Bob Tillman. Steve Keeley. Jim Holt. Vic Davalio, I think. <laughs> Bob Berta. Joe Coleman. John Morris in a sixth. Louis Alvarado. That notoriously famous airbrushing job that they did on these cards. Caesar Tovar. Mike Hirschberger. All right, now we're getting into some 69s. These should be the slightly higher graded ones. Take a quick peek at these. Move these over here. Dan Combs and a 7.5. Mike Kekich and a 7. Alex Johnson. Wade Blazing Game and an 8. I had a 68 tops. Uh, Roberto Rodriguez and Daryl Osteen. I don't know if he's related to Claude Osteen who played back in the day. Daryl Brandon and a 7.5. Bill McCool. Cisco Carlos. Tom Dukes. I almost wonder if his, they put the name backwards. It sounds, Carlos Cisco sounds like it would be a more normal name than Cisco Carlos, but what do I know? Alrighty. Chris Canazero. Joe Foy. Tom Murphy. A rookie 69 rookie. Tom Hutton, Alan Foster, and a 6. And I'm going to have to pause the video because I'm running out of storage. Russ Schneider. Be right. Okay, we should be good now. Pete Ward. He was a great ball player back in the day. Five and a half on a mint looking card. Just a little off centered. Sammy Ellis. 5.5 on a 68. Alright guys, last stack. Thanks for sticking with me this long. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Alrighty, let's go here. Let's see. Dick Boseman. Good ball player back in the day and a seven. Dave Nelson. These are here are 75 minis. By the way, if you can tell, that's uh for just for people who are just kind of getting into the hobby. You can see how it's quite a bit smaller than the regular card. Or even side by side, you can kind of see the whole border of the 68. Anyways, Dave Nelson, sorry for that glare and a seven. Von Joshua. These are like these are all pack fresh. Ben Aglevy. Uh, he's he's a really good signer through the mail even right now. Fritz Peterson, I met him. He's got a pretty funny story. You guys should read a story about him and his wife and his partner, or sorry, teammate and his wife. They swapped wives, literally. Uh, they both divorced their wives and the other ones married them. So, they, uh, Pat Dobson, I think it, I forget who it was though. Another Yankee, I can't remember. Back in the Yankee days, uh, George Medich in a 7.5, Jeff Burrow in a 7.5. Okay, I always like looking at these 75s when they're nice and clean, too. Okay, Caesar Tover. A 6.5. Mike Cosgrove and a 6.5. Another Mike Cosgrove and a 5.5. Sorry about that glare. Toby Hara, good ball player back in the day. Also a good signer through the mill currently. Uh, Daryl Johnson, manager card, team card of the Red Sox, and a 5.5. Tony Oliva. Very nice in a 5.5. Jerry Grote for the Mets. Good Met back in the day. Bruce Dahl Canton. And Halicki. Rennie Stinnett. I don't know why that's got a 25 on there. It is not a $25 card. And a 5. Okay. Don Money. Yeah, show me the money. Joe Levitti. Don Kessinger, Bob Robertson, Robert Robertson, that's a horrible thing to name your kid, Robert Robertson, look at that, and to make it even worse, his middle name's Eugene, Cliff Johnson, he made a name for himself back in the day, alrighty, move these a lot of the way here, 
couple more st stacks about that size and we'll be good to go guys Let's just make a little bit of room there's so many cards i don't even know how many there are ah oh, actually that's a lie i think i remember it's like 147 andy messersmith pat kelly not the yankees pat kelly chuck taylor cool bullpen picture there bobby mercer that's a yankee great huge fan favorite what do we got here what's upside down all righty Let's see here, 1970, Jerry May, in a seven. Skip Lockwood, again, look at the, just look at this card. I mean, look at the, look at the, look at the corners and how sharp these cards are. Just so nice. Uh, Phil Lindblad, in a seven. Eddie Leon, in a 7.5. Jerry May, in a 7.5. That's, uh, was it 1970? Is that the... Oh, yeah, that's the year the Pirates. I think the Pirates won the World Series that year. Gail Hopkins and a team card of the White Sox and a seven. Those are usually pretty off-center, those old team cards there. All right, last stack, guys, and we'll let you get the heck out of here if you're still with me. Uh, Elrod Hendricks and a 5.5. Jose Pena, old Dodger pitcher. Ron Herbel, having a pretty good day, it looks like. Jerry May again in a 6.5. Gene Michael in a 6. Hey, Tommy Agee, good center fielder for the Mets back in the day. He passed away in like 2001 pretty early. Jerry May again. I think that's my third. I'll make that fourth Jerry May. And then Jack Aker with the airbrush. But you know what? We know that's not a Yankee uniform. Look at that red. Let's see who he played for. It's probably going to be... I don't know. It looks like old Kansas City, but it could also be minor league uniform. Who knows? That's a six, though. Hey, another Jerry May. Holy smoke. I didn't realize I had so many Jerry Mays. There you go. Fred Bean. And I'm missing one card. I'm going to go out and take a peek and see if I can't find it. Hold on one second. There's Kyle Kuntz. It's the one card I, I got that's actually worth a couple bucks. Hold on one second. All right, I found it. Okay, here's one card. I, got, I pulled this one out and see if I need it for my sex. I'm building a 52 and a 56 set. I've been building it forever. This one's a, an 8OC, PSA 8OC, so decent card. Uh, for those of you who don't know, OC, that means uh, off-centered. And they generally sell for about two grades lower than the the grade, an 8. And then the last card I got was this one right here. It's a 63 Flair, Sandy Kopex, and a PSA 5. Decent card. The uh, whole card looks really, really clean. A little tiny corner issue there, but um, this is going to be the best card that I got in the whole pile. So, okay, so what did I pay for these? Uh, I paid $450 for all these cards. Like I said, there's 147 or 148 cards. Uh, this card alone, I think a realistic value on it in this grade is a solid 125 Possibly get 150 on a good day. Take a hundred bucks on a really really bad day, but I probably wouldn't. I'd probably just stick to the 125 on this one at a show. So with this one being 125, uh, that that brings me down to 325 for the rest of the cards. Um, so 100. So that's it ends up being if I get a if I get a hundred um, 25 for the Kofax, and that ends up being about two dollars and 21 cents per card right there afterwards. So. 221 325 divided by 147 221 so for $2.21 that's a pretty good deal for all these cards minus the uh the Kofax I'm going to take them to my show um I'm going to put most of them you know I'm probably going to just put most of them in a box and let people cherry pick them for 10 bucks a piece uh minus minus the sevens and stuff uh because they are super clean even the commons are super clean commons and people will want them uh for their sets and stuff what are they really worth? Whatever someone's willing to pay for them. I mean, some of those sevens I can probably get 20 bucks for, uh, maybe 25 bucks for some. Uh, but the most of them are going to be in the 10 to $15 range. Uh, so, yeah, with all that being said, I'm going to take these and and uh, bring them to the shows and then uh, use some of them for uh, for my hot packs. And, again, just go ahead and check that, that video out. Uh, in fact, I'll link it down below so you can just click on it and see what it's all about. All right, you guys have a great rest of the day. Thanks for watching. I hope that you liked this video. Hopefully you subscribe to the channel. We've been around for a long time, and we're still working on 
on moving up the ladder on the subs. So you guys have a good rest of the day. Also, if you don't have a, if you don't mind, let me know what your favorite card in, in this whole video is. Uh, minus the Kofax. I'd like to know which one you like the best. Minus the Kofax. All right. Have a good one. Later.